Well, I'd like to call to order the January 7th, 2019 Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners work session. Uh, welcome everyone. It's good to see everybody in the new year. Uh, first up is the approval of our work session agenda, which you all have before you, including the changes on page three. Do I hear a motion that we approve the work session agenda as presented with the changes? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move to discussion items. First up from infrastructure and asset management is an update on the parking deck. And we welcome Kyle Billifer to the table. Uh, good evening. Uh, obviously the weather has uh, done a number on us at the parking deck. We're still on schedule to open to the public on March 1st, which is what we had said from the beginning. Um, we'll probably have some punch list items that will um, extend right up to that deadline. Um, so we are working with them. It'll, it'll probably require us to carry our builder's risk insurance uh, probably about two weeks longer than we had originally anticipated. Um, in terms of the progress, there is an attachment on there that you can all look at that will show you pictures. I can just give you a summary. Um, the elevator pits are ready for the elevators, which that kind of shows you um, how close we are. Um, right now, they're working on a lot of the knockdown and the polishing of your exposed concrete. So as you walk through the deck and do site tours, there's all sorts of chips of concrete being put everywhere as they take those off and kind of polish those patches out. Um, they're looking to install the brakes. Uh, and the different caulking as the time um, moves forward and we get a little bit drier. Obviously, the areas around the deck, specifically on Barbrick, are extremely uh, mud pits right now. So we're trying to kind of get those all graded um, so that we can move forward with all the, the final finishings. Uh, of course, they will have to come back and do landscape after the project is actually open. So after we open the deck, they'll come back in a growing season and put in a lot of the landscaping. Um, we have worked with construction standards on what they'll require um, so that we can start moving towards a CO in terms of a, a certificate of compliance for all the special inspections that the county had to pay for. Um, so we're kind of moving forward. Weather is our, our biggest um, detriment right now. Uh, we have not even started having any of the O&M trainings with our staff yet. So like I said, that's all coming to fruition here in the next month. February will be pretty busy, busy with us at the deck. Any questions? Will we have another update or we'll go and just kind of circle back? And we'll probably, I can, well, it'll be open by the time we meet in March. If you'd like me to, I can, I can come up in February and present. Um, I, in January or a regular meeting in July? No, we do, or we do February work session. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I guess, I don't know. When you get down to the end, you just sort of want to keep a little closer tab on it. But so, not to cause a headache, but that would be nice. Yeah. Not right. Sure. Sure. What is O&M training? Uh, all the different uh, equipment that they're putting in there. We have to go through training on all of that. So all the parking arms, all the elevators, everything like that, our staff has to go through that. That's a requirement of any contract the county has, whether it be CM at risk or just a regular general contractor as we have that turnover. We've obviously, it's been Michael Miller's my responsibility to review every submittal that's come in um, and have input on the types of equipment that's put in there. But then when it comes to training the actual employees, you have to go through training and a sign off on all that before it can be turned over to you. Does O&M stand for Operation and Maintenance? Yes, it does. Okay. Any other questions? All righty. Thank you, sir. We are excited and look forward to driving our cars in there. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. Next up uh, is item 4.1 from Kannapolis City Schools, and we are happy to see that Will Crabtree has joined us to talk about a resolution acknowledging the execution and delivery by the Kannapolis Board of Education of a guaranteed energy savings contract. Welcome. Just in time. Good. Yes, sir. Good. Perfect Good. timing. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, thank you for having me this afternoon. Um, I have before you a resolution uh, that's uh, prepared by the uh, state of North Carolina that authorizes the uh, school system to 
enter into a guaranteed energy savings contract. This is provided for by uh, General Statute 143-64.17. Uh, it provides for school systems to enter into such contracts. The resolution in and of itself, the biggest point of the resolution is um, number E, or not letter, number, letter E, uh, where it says the board does not intend to reduce appropriations to the school board based on the reduction of energy costs. Why that's important is the uh, savings from energy costs are what pays the financing off for the project. Um, a basically lays out that it will not uh, be more than $4 million. B lays out the school board intends to finance the project using the model as approved in general statute. C, the energy savings would be expected to equal or exceed the total cost under the contract. And that, uh, that point is also an important one. Um, that's where the guaranteed energy savings comes in. If the uh, savings do not equal the amount of the payment, the provider, which in this point would be trained, is required by law to make up the difference in that cost. So there is no um, liability or anything out there for the school system or the commissioners. And indeed, the payments under the contract are not expected to require any additional appropriations to be made to the school board nor any increase in taxes by commissioners. So this is a requirement that the uh, resolution be passed by the Board of Commissioners in order for us to move forward with the project. There is a, um, a small kind of update of what we're looking at past that. I can go through it if you'd like or I'll open it up for questions now. Have you guys done one of these before? No, this is our first That's one. the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions for Will? Will, this is a 15-year contract, too, I believe. Is it that is. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I know they got to know what they're doing to, you know, to stretch it out for 15 years like that, but, I mean, I don't know how we can predict 15 years down the road, but that's not really our job, you know, to do that but they obviously know what they're doing, so. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of these have been done uh, in the state of North Carolina. Uh, I know uh, Caldwell County is another school system that is pretty much on the same track as we are right now. They're at the same spot uh, in the process that we are. Uh, I I'm, know that uh, Charlotte's done it, Wake's done it, a lot of other counties, CPCC, uh, Community College has done it, so. It's not an uncommon practice in the state of North Carolina. Yeah. Now, for utility cost and things like that, we we have incremental increases, don't we, Pam? Periodically, so that will still continue. I'm assuming. Right. I mean, if it's not no, it's not like a fixed utility cost. Right. I think what the resolution is saying is this process would not require you to provide us any more energy uh, funding. Okay. Uh, they just like we can't see the future they can't either so if right. something happens in the future over and above what this project has done then there could be a increase in need okay. thanks so if I interpret it correctly you get updated systems for no at no cost we're going to get approximately four million dollars worth of updated systems uh, at no cost to the county um, just off the savings that the updated systems will save us from energy cost. Yeah, what what we currently pay, pay in in monthly bills for consumption mm -hmm. of the, the power that that money will a portion of that will we will still pay the same amount, but Correct. a portion of that will go to pay for the bill, and the other bill the other portion right. will go to pay for the new equipment. Yeah. Is this just for schools or does the uh, chillers in this building qualify? There, there are some performance contracts out there that other counties are looking at, but I don't know. Kyle, we've, we've talked with a couple of, yeah, we've, we've talked to a couple of different companies, but we've not chosen to do it at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? All righty. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next item is Salisbury Rowan Community Action Agency presentation, and we're happy to have Dion Atkins Tate with us for that. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'm Dion Atkins Tate, Director of Family Services for the Salisbury Rowan Community Action Agency, and I am here to present to you the Community Services Block Grant funding application for the 2019 2020 fiscal year. So the Community Services Block Grant funding app app allocation for the year 2019-2020 for Cabarrus County will be $244,368. The total Community Services Block Grant funding allocation was in total for $492,105. Um, Cabarrus County receives 49% um, of that. And that number is based off of the U.S. Um, Census Bureau's um, small poverty estimate, which um, estimated Cabarrus County to have 21,098 um, persons in poverty, 980 persons in poverty, my, excuse me. So the intended use of funding um, will be for employment assistance, job training, entrepreneurship support, financial literacy, as well as professional development. Funding will be um, allocated through the Community Services Block Grant Funding, um, which is also the self-sufficiency program through the Salisbury Rowan Community Action Agency. Um, that program will um, allocate funds to those who are income eligible in both Rowan and Cabarrus County and they have to be motivated to obtain employment or better employment and to become self-sufficient. So during our 2017-2018 community impact we were able to service um, 72 families in Cabarrus County. We had 12 of those families to rise above poverty 35 obtained employment or better employment. 20, um, I'm, I'm sorry, let me make sure that I, I said it right. Oh, I'm sorry. 35 um, received employment supports. Um, employment supports could be anything from um, job equipment, it could be anything from um, uniforms, fuel for them to get back and forth to work. Um, and then we had 20 to obtain employment. 35 uh, received educational supports, um, which also includes full tuition for any types of certifications. And then we had six of our um, families to receive standardized housing. So during the 2019-2020, our expected outcomes are to serve 130 participants. Um, we are expecting 25 to rise above poverty, uh, 30 to obtain employment, 10 to obtain better employment. And when we say better employment, that's employment with um, benefits. Um, it could be increased hours, um, increased wages. Um, and then we want to have at least um, seven of those jobs to have medical benefits. <coughs> Uh, we want to have 25 of our participants to complete, complete employment training, um, five to secure standardized housing. We want to at least provide 20 of our participants with emergency assistance, 45 with employment supports, and 25 with educational supports. Um, we are located, our main office is located in Salisbury, North Carolina at 1300 West Bank Street. Um, our Cabarrus County location is here um, at the NC Works Career Center in Concord at 845 um, Church Street North, Suite 201. Um, any persons who are interested in applying for our services could go, can go to either one of those locations and speak with a family development specialist and um, complete an application for services. And that concludes my presentation. Okay. Anyone have questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dion, once again, good to have you back with us. Thank you. And Thank you uh, for me. I had the question that I have: How many people are in, on the staff for the um, Salisbury Rowing Community Action? Well, um, I'll. 
for our entire agency we, agency, we have over 300 employees. Uh, we service up to six counties. For the community services block grant itself, um, very small. Um, we only have two family development specialists here in Cabarrus County. Um, they have a caseload of up to 25 to 30 persons. Um, and then in Rowan County, we have three, um, which includes an intake specialist. Okay. So of the 400 some thousand on the grant, so mm -hmm. you've only got basically five staff that you're paying from that. So that means the majority of these funds go directly, have an impact on families. Um, yes. What we do, because of the type of funding it is, it's a community, um, it's a block grant. So therefore we have operational costs. So we do have to pay out salaries um, from that budget. Right. We also have to pay out um, any type of space costs, anything that operates our funds. But we, by federal law, we have to expend at least 10% of those funds into client services. Um, Generally, I like to put at least 15% of those funds into client services because I want to at least serve as many persons as possible with the funds we have available. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay, real quick, just mm -hmm. the, 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 the training that you guys do, uh, is it training, is it, is it work training or is it also some life skills and personal finance and that type of training as well? So we do both. Um, yeah. We do have um, workshops um, that we have monthly for each of our um, program participants. So we have banks that come in and do our financial literacy. We also have partnerships with banks where they are actually tied to a particular program um, where they learn financial literacy, um, learn to maintain their monthly budget, things of that nature. And then on top of that, we also pay for any type of tuition for certification. So we pay for truck driving school, we pay for CNA training, we pay for welding, whatever it may be. The only thing we are not able to pay for is degrees. When you talk about standard housing, yes. what, what exactly does that mean? These six, six families and individuals receive standardized housing. What, what does that mean? So generally we target those who are homeless um, and are working um, because we are not, we don't have the funds to um, have continued crisis assistance. Those families that do enter into our program who are homeless but working, we're able to transition them into permanent housing um, and making sure that it is standardized, not substandard, um, to where, you know, there's any type of um, issues around uh, the building or um, living space or anything of that nature but that's what we mean by standardized housing just making sure that they have um, permanent housing um, generally we pay first month's rent or deposit um, or utilities or something of that nature just to give the family in and give them a head start right. okay any more questions all right we thank you very much for being with thank us thank you for having me okay Okay, next item is commissioner appointments for 2019, and you all have a list of those in front of you. We had some discussion about those last month and requested feedback. We didn't get any strong feedback that anybody wanted to make a change other than the couple that we had discussed. So uh, those are pretty much the same that they were last year. Um, if anybody has any adjustments they would like to make going forward, please feel free to express that and we'll take a look at it. Any questions or comments? Okay. Yes, sir. Well, just the Concord is one of mine and it's showing Commissioner Poole. And somehow I just, I didn't notice that. Okay. Previously. Well, we can certainly make that correction. Because I, I will continue on with that. Any other changes anyone notice? It's a little small to read on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, if you do run across anything else, you can just let Lauren know and, uh, and we'll correct it. Okay, and then the next item, 4.4, .4, resolution amending the Board of Commissioners 2019 meeting schedule. And you have that before you as well which includes, um, I think, our quarterly summit uh, schedule for the upcoming year, as well as our board retreat, which is scheduled for 
February 22nd and 23rd and will be held in this room. And that starts on, yeah, it's got the times on there, Friday at 4 o'clock and then Saturday at 8 a.m. Any questions or comments? Okay, we move to item 4.5, convert board approved policy to administrative policy. And I think Pam Dubois will explain that to us. Yes, back in December 4th of 2004, the board approved a recycling policy. And as we know, a lot of things have changed since then. And as Kevin Grant came before you last month and was discussing the recycling program and the contract that was underway, uh, we've been revitalizing a lot of policies and we feel at this point that for the policy to be administrative would be more beneficial than for it to be board approved because a lot of the regulations tell you what you can and can't recycle how you have to recycle where you can recycle and so uh, Kevin has updated this policy for you for us and it is attached for you to be able to review but our request is for it to become an administrative policy so it can be modified as the changes in the rules uh, occur and therefore it would not have to be brought in front of the board again in the future, but the policy would be available on the internet for anyone who would like to access it. So that's the request is to make it an administrative policy versus the board approved. Okay, questions for Ms. Dubois. Makes a lot of sense to me. All right, we move to the next item. We're happy to have Bob Bushy from Transportation here to talk about the 5307 grant. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to come before you. Um, I'm presenting a federal 5307 grant, and there's there's two parts to this story. Uh, we've been contacted by Mr. Travis McGee at the radio shop and informed that our radios and our buses had met their useful life and that from this point forward, if they stop working, there's no replacing them and no parts. Just so happened a few weeks after that conversation, I was contacted by the state of North Carolina who administers the federal 5307 grant. They had uh, $41,188 left over from FY13 and asked if I had any use for it. I asked them if I could use it for radios and they said I could. So we have filled out the grant application. So we would like to come before the board on the 22nd and ask for uh, approval to go ahead and apply for that grant and it will require a public hearing as well. Okay. Okay, questions for Mr. Bushy? Well, we appreciate you keeping your finger on that and, uh, and noting that that was available to us. All righty, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move to item 4.7 from finance, Susan Fearington to talk about adjustments to the construction and renovation fund and school construction fund. So usually once or twice a year, we'll bring to you some projects that need some cleanup. These projects are construction um, in nature and they're in a multi-year fund, which means that they have to have a project ordinance that needs to be updated and the budget updated, which is not normally a part of your normal um, annual budget process. So tonight I'm bringing before you the construction renovation fund and the school construction fund along with those I provided a list of the items of projects that we were updating to get them to the actual amounts and a list of, of projects that we are finished with and we need to get them off our books. If we don't do the cleanup it just gets so cumbersome trying to keep up with the project ordinances in the future. Um, so uh, for the projects just want to highlight a couple of them from the ones that we're adjusting. It's the top part of the um, th this list right here. It's this up in front of you. We're going to adjust some of those projects, and these same projects we'll show you next year, and we'll write them off. So we, the process of getting them cleaned up and then writing them off. But um, under the list of the projects that we're writing off down at the bottom, I did want to point out to you that for the roofs, um, we have done multiple roofs during the past couple of years. Since 2015, I did take a look at that. We have put on um, one, two, three, four, six roofs and one roof repair at different high schools and elementary schools and middle schools. And we spent $5.5 million. And that was not debt funded money. That's cash money that we've been able to put roofs on buildings um, for the schools, which is um, <coughs> put a dent in their 
long deferred maintenance project list. Let me ask you a question, Susan, before we get much further. Will you explain what write-off is? Because, you know, can look at a different term. We're not writing money off, but can you explain that sure. in this context? In our um, general ledger, we have to keep up with a project for the life of the year. So a project might last four or five years, and that budget continues to report in our uh, general ledger system. Every time you print a report there, it shows up. It shows up every time. So this write-off is just means that we've collected all our revenues, we've collected all of our expenses, we have finished the project, everything's been signed off on, and we just need to get it off our books for cleanup. We don't want to sit, have something out there five years you know, back and then still keep showing up. It just, um, it's just nice to clean up our systems. We just have current projects that, that are being presented. Okay, any other questions? All right. Next month, I'll be bringing a couple more funds to you to for write-offs to the same process. Okay, thank you. Okay, from Infrastructure and Asset Management, Midland Branch Library Agreement. Uh, good evening. Uh, county staff has worked with the county attorney and the town of Midland staff to develop a Midland Branch Library Agreement detailing the terms of the lease and the responsibilities of the various parties. Uh, Doug Paris, the town of Midland manager, has notified county staff that this agreement would be placed on the agenda for their regular meeting in January and signed. And at once at that point, I would make sure that I get it in front of the board. Um, it will go to your regular meeting for the actual um, memorandum of understanding to be approved, but I most likely won't have their signed copy until after that. So I'll, I'll work through the clerk to make sure that we can get your signature on it. Um, the requested action is obviously to motion to approve the agreement between Cabarrus County and the Town of Midland for the Midland Branch Library and authorize the Chair of the Board of Commissioners to execute the agreement on the behalf of Cabarrus County, subject to review or revisions by the County Attorney, which will most likely be minimal since he wrote most of it. Um, I will tell you that uh, I can point out a couple things that are probably on the actual attachment, um, the actual agreement itself, um, Section 6. Uh, and seven, uh, probably from, from our standpoint, uh, infrastructure and asset management are very important. Uh, the town shall provide at its, ex its expense the maintenance and repair of the exterior of the building, including the roof, exterior walls, exterior windows, and provide lighting in the park parking areas. The town shall also provide maintenance of the grounds surrounding the library building, including the parking areas and roadways. Number seven states, the town shall provide as it, at its expense maintenance and repair of the interior of the building and its operating systems, such as electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. Um, we don't go into the weeds in this agreement about replacement of finish, finishes as things move on, typically in a build to suit kind of standpoint. If you do wear and tear that's above normal, you're going to be paying for it yourself. Um, and we will, of course, still be handling custodial. Um, but based on their operating hours, we'll be sending somebody down twice a week, maybe three times a week to handle that. We don't have any operations near there, so um, it'll take somebody out of their normal route, but we will um, work it in. So that kind of just throws that out there. We have not hammered out the details on exterior or interior signage, but we are working with the town on that. So we are getting very close um, to having that branch open. We're actually just trying to wait on when the shelving will be able to be installed so that we can set the uh, actual ceremony to open it up. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on this afternoon, or okay. in this meeting here. Let's try to set, it, try to figure out a good date. So. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Billifer? I think you said it's on their January agenda. It is. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, I actually looked at their uh, agenda, and it's one of the last items on there. And the town manager assured me that he would get me the signed copy. I just I don't know that I will have it by your regular session right. meeting. Okay. Any other questions? All right. We'll move to item 4.9, uh, transfer of surplus vehicle to Mount Mitchell Fire and Medical. And we're happy to have Michael Miller with us. Good evening. The Mount Mitchell Fire and Medical <clears throat> have requested one surplus vehicle from the Cabarrus County Fleet. County staff have identified asset number 8376, which is a 2015 Ford Police Interceptor SUV with approximately 111, <clears throat> 
111,000 miles um, as a match for this request. According to the request from the Mountain Mitchell Fire and Medical Department, the vehicle will be used for training at other departments, picking up supplies, and traveling to county meetings. This vehicle will also be set up in a state of readiness to be used as a quick response vehicle for medical calls as well. So the requested action of the board is for a motion to declare asset number 8376 surplus property and to authorize disposition in accordance with the county policy. Are there any questions? This may be seem obvious, but the expense of getting it from here to there is on them? They usually come and get them. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right, that's what I assume. But yes, sir. I'd ask. I'm sure I've asked this before, but what's the standard number of miles that we usually retire a sheriff's department vehicle? For emergency vehicles, it's 100,000 miles. 100, that's what um, I thought. Everything else is 125,000. Right. Okay, any other questions? All righty. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, from Planning and Development, Community Development Grant Request, and we're happy to have Kelly Sifford with us. Good evening. I'm going to float around just a minute and answer a couple of questions and give some updates before we get into the business. Uh, I did want to follow up on the standard versus substandard housing, mm -hmm. um, just to give you a little more explanation from a community development standpoint. Um, what she was really coming out and saying was that they're trying to make sure that the housing that these people obtain is standard, it has heat, it has plumbing, it has all of the things it should have, so they're not moving them into a house that's considered substandard, which does not have all of the adequate facilities. Right. Okay. So just to be clear, that was where that conversation was going. Um, also, I wanted to give you an update on Prosperity Ridge. It finally did close on December 17th. The loans are closed. Um, I will give you an update as soon as they schedule a groundbreaking. Obviously, groundbreaking is a little bit difficult right now, um, but that did close, and so we'll be moving forward on that very shortly. Um, so, on to the rest of the business. Um, this is my annual request and or and or permission request, I guess, to apply for weatherization, HARP, and housing and home improvement funds. Um, we would like to approve for all, uh, request approval from you to um, apply for all of those. Um, of course, we'll be pursuing any Duke funds um, that do not have match. Um, none of those have had match thus far. Um, we're still <coughs> receiving the reimbursements. <coughs> on projects that we have done that we spend state money on they reimburse us a certain amount on those um, and we use that it's required to be rolled back into the program to expand the program so that's what we've been doing with that um, we have been very fortunate to have those funds um, because this year has been very difficult on heat and air and I'll get back to that in just a second um, the second part of the request is um, I would request that we do not pursue home funds this year um, we will be participating in a um, housing study that's required by HUD that will use some of the funds to pay for that, um, but uh, not actually go after any activity money. Right now, we don't have a list of people qualified. Um, what I would like to request that you consider going into next year is um, maybe using what we have used in the past for match for a local program if you're so inclined. Um, to do urgent repair. Right now, I have 11 people approved and waiting on heat and air services. We've expended pretty much all of our uh, heating and air money. Um, we have six applications out there and we're halfway through the year. Um, I did do some research on an urgent repair program that was out there through the state right now. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't really, our client list doesn't really work well with it. Um, it we have several mobile homes that are um, DMV tagged, not personal property, or not property uh, in, the, in the sense that you can put a deed of trust on it and those kind of things. Um, they'll only allow 20% of your mobile homes to have that. Um, they require 30% of your clients to be, or 50% uh, of your clients to be 30% or, or un, less on income. And uh, they have a list of program availability it's only for elderly disabled veterans families with children with elevated blood level level I'm not speaking well today lead levels um, so realistically when we get down to it there's two clients that we know that we could serve with that program and one is on the list with Canapolis as well right now and may get served through them the other one 
um, maybe an unrealistic $10,000 max repair. Um, so I, I did pursue and look for other external options, um, but for the clients that we have on the list, it's just not gonna be helpful to us. Um, so I wanted to throw that out there for you all to be thinking about for next year's funding. Um, we are generating as much Duke money as we can. Um, we think we may be able to absorb maybe four of those by the end of the year by rolling over the Duke money. Um, but that's probably as much as we're going to be able to absorb with that money. Um, so um, those are the things that I wanted to let you think about. Um, but right now just asking for approval to make the applications that we normally make and then we can you know deal with the rest through the budget process where, where do the home funds where, where can we use those for the ones it that is, you're saying so, that we shouldn't apply so with those when you touch a house you have to bring it to code right and typically now when you if you can find somebody that's qualified because there are a number of qualifications there can't be any liens on the property they have to have the right income they have to have enough equity um, and the house has to be um, such that you can do it and not exceed 100 percent of value of that home so once you touch that house if it has lead you have to address lead um, and that can get very expensive um, when i say address lead i mean they mean removal every bit of it not encapsulate it has to be removed. Um, so the last few jobs that we did had gotten very expensive. And um, so like, unbelievably, one of the last houses we did several years ago, the house had 34 windows that were all hot for lid. I kept counting the, <laughs> I guess this can't be right, this can't be right, but it was. And so um, in the past, commissioners had expressed a concern about, you know, so much investment into one or two houses versus it, that 25,000, if I use it for urgent repair, I can probably serve four to five people depending on how much needs to be done. Um, and just because that program, once you touch the house, you have to bring it to code. So they may only need heat and air or only really want heating and air. But when I go in there, I might have to redo their electrical. I might have to do the roof. I might have to do, you know, drainage issues. So it just, it gets into a lot more for the client and for us. And 25,000 <clears> is the amount that we have been using as a match. Yes, okay. the, the, that pro, the home program requires a 25% match. Uh, and so we've typically gotten somewhere between <coughs> 90 and 105,000. So we've used 25,000 because you don't know ahead of time. So we've always requested 25 just to kind of mm -hmm. stay in the right ballpark. Um, and so we could potentially use that money with a local program and then just do heat, you know, we could tie it to heat and air only if that's your wish. That would be my goal at this point because I think we've got enough heat and air issues right now um, to, to do that. Um, but obviously it would be a slight change in direction from what we've done in the past. So, you know, I wanted to run that by you, something for you to think about. Okay, other questions? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. We move now to discussion items number five, and we talk about the Cabarrus County strategic plan. And we are happy to have Lauren back with us. evening hope y'all enjoyed your holiday break even though you had to do a survey during it <laughs> um, well I have this in case you don't have it on you you want to make notes um, it's pretty much what's in your agenda packet I'll just pass it around that way and this way Okay. 
So I uh, just want to let y'all know I'm going to try to go as slow as possible tonight. I want you guys to stop me, slow me down. If there's anything you want to say in the middle of it, um, any comments are welcome, completely welcome. Okay, so first I'll start out by telling you about the survey, getting everybody up to date on it. I uh, sent out a survey two weeks ago. Um, it had 12 questions, sent it to county management, uh, all department heads, managers, administrators, and also opened it up to anybody from, um, that the department heads wanted to send it to. Um, so anybody in their department that they thought should be included, supervisors. So there is not a total number to report to you who this went to. So I think that we did really good with 46 responses. Uh, all county commissioners, all county management, uh, 18 department heads, 16 managers slash administrators, and then three other. That was a question on the survey. That's how we know how many people are on there. Okay, so first question was, uh, please rank the following function areas according to importance for capital growth. Uh, we defined capital growth as the need for more capital projects as the population continues to grow in different areas of the county. Uh, capital projects include uh, the purchase or acquisition of county assets such as buildings, land, or equipment, the replacement or rehabilitation of an existing asset, uh, if it has a value of 100,000 or greater, has a useful life of five years or more, and spans more than one fiscal year from project planning to completed construction or acquisition. So we asked uh, our uh, respondents to, uh, to rank these uh, from one most important, seven least important. Um, this is the actual result. So number one was public safety, number two, education, three, human services, four, general government, five, environmental protection, six, culture and recreation, seven, economic and physical development. All good with that? Okay. So next question, please rate the following solutions for capital growth uh, if funding is available. So the three options, well not options, but the three things that you were rating were uh, build new buildings or infrastructure, uh, use satellite workspaces, which were flexible or shared spaces throughout the county, uh, and partner with local entities. So for those, uh, we had a high, um, a high response for uh, probably so. Um, in all, all in the first and last uh, item. The middle one, a little bit scattered about there. Um, and we did leave this open for comments. So let me go ahead and tell you the comments about it. So uh, in those comments, we had a couple of pros and cons uh, that emerged. So uh, pros are, it cuts down on uh, commute for some workers, engagement with other departments, so like that connection. Uh, some cons were, is this a temporary solution and is it better for, is it best for the customer? One other comment was uh, about partnering with local entities. Uh, maybe we can partner with the school systems for shared space. The next question was uh, municipal solid waste collected in the unincorporated area goes to the CMS landfill. The landfill will be full in the next 15 years. What should our next steps be? Uh, majority of respondents said plan for a regional landfill. 21.7 responded with plan for another local landfill and some comments were um, maybe do a little waste reduction education, um, look outside of the county, and maybe contract with a public or private regional 
solid waste disposal or landfill facility. Anybody have comments on that? Nope. Okay. I know we all love to talk about the landfill, but. <laughs> um, okay. So fifth question was how can current programs and services be improved? And this was an open-ended question. So I went through and scored it for common themes that emerged. So uh, seven different times we saw an occurrence of evaluation of current programs and services um, and specifically heard about um, wanting detail in strategic planning. Um, next, increased funding, uh, continued training, specifically comprehensive training, customer service, and technology to get the most out of what we already have. Uh, next was recruitment, specifically a salary uh, benefit assessment, which we currently do, um, and uh, internal culture. Uh, what is that? I, I guess in trying to interpret, yeah. it said the, the phrase internal culture can mean a lot of things. It can, yeah. So, I mean, what does that really mean in terms of using it for recruitment or, I mean, is it selling what we have is it trying to take what we have and make it better i mean what is it the what way are we saying? sorry the way that i that i see it is um is looking at what we have and and presenting it in that way saying hey we do have a great internal culture hey you want to work for us because <clears throat> this 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 and this you know so maybe showing it better or or advertising it better yeah we we do a lot of that now and in fact not only in the recruitment process but once we already get once we get them uh, to come on board part of that onboarding process is also Jonathan and Pam and myself we all meet with them and talk to them a little bit about that and what your vision is and, and how you feel about your support for county employees as well as county management so we're well aware of the, our internal culture but it appears that you know somebody's looking for something more than what we're doing. So we're going to investigate that a little bit more too. But uh, we we do stress that quite a bit. And notice the question says improvements. You know, I mean, we could be doing a great job, but right. someone just really thinks that, or a couple of people just think that that is an area of improvement. Okay. Next, uh, improved efficiency. So through collaboration um, and providing resources in a timely manner, um, continued communication, uh, meeting community needs uh, or social obligations, um, increased staff, and better distribution of services. <clears throat> Next question was, what new programs or services, if any, should be added to address emerging or unmet needs? So this question kind of had two parts to it. So that if any kind of said, are you saying yes or no to this? And then, um, and some people chose to go with the no. And I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. So this right here is the yes part. And this is the um, quality of life is, uh, occurred most so smaller community parks, parks spread out across the county, library expansion, senior services, and public art. Um, next was social services. So um, one of the biggest things that I read in there were, were talking about beds. So mental health, homeless shelter, addiction recovery beds. Next was affordable housing enhanced public transportation, diversity and inclusion, specifically speaking about uh, maybe having a department to ensure that these things are implemented, um, more bilingual services in all departments, and hiring and recruiting improvements. Next was environmental education outreach, and then early childhood education. I'm just curious. Sure. Do you know how many bilingual people you have on staff now? I, I don't know how many exact number, but we do incentivize them for, for those additional languages. We have qu 
support. We have, we have some full-time interpreters that, that that is their job at Human Services. We also have some additional ones. We probably, I don't know, is Lundy here? Yeah, I'll say around 20. 20. 20 total. But we can pull, and we incentivize them to not just working within their own departments. They can be pulled as a resource. Like, I think there's two or three in this building. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of people coming through for building permits that need assistance sometimes. If they don't have their children with them to help interpret, then we can pull, if there's not one available in the department, we can pull from another department to come up and help. And I would assume yeah. Spanish is the number one. Mm -hmm. What, we have what Spanish, else? Spanish, yes. Russian, we have sign we have language, um, Turkish. Turkish. Yeah. Those are the ones that we have right now. Yeah. Okay. And we do get a list with all those phone numbers on it just in case something comes up around here. So. Um, okay, so we're going to go into the no portion, the people who, who said no, uh, no new programs or ser services. So um, those who said, hey, let's focus on what we have, were there, it occurred seven times. Um, and I included evaluation of current services, collaboration, <laughs> access to current services, and um, focusing on core and mandated services in, in with that one. Lauren, can you tell me exactly how that question was asked? What yes. was the question? This question said, or is that on what, the sheet you gave us? Nope, you don't. Yeah. I, these are just my notes. What new programs or services, if any, should be added to address new, emerging, or unmet needs? Okay. Okay. All right, next question. Which physical area of the county is currently most underserved by county services? This was a little scattered about, um, but 16 people said Eastern region or said something about Mount Pleasant. Then we had Southern region, 12 people um, or 12 instances, and that was Midland, um, included Midland, uh, Western region, Northeast and Northwestern. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, this may be obvious, but there's, I would imagine certain people taking the survey mm -hmm. whose level of information on what we provide in every area of the county is up here. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's probably one of the questions that I struggled with, just knowing. <laughs> You know, all the various different parts and not knowing in detail, well, we do this here, but we don't do that there. So I guess that's that's just we're going on mm -hmm. some sort of perception. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a little more perception right now. Yeah, because you're right. We offer services all all over the county. And do we have physical structures in, in every part of the county? No, we don't, such as libraries, such as EMS stations. But yeah, so so there may some may can drive two blocks and go to the library. Some may have to drive 15 miles to get to the library. So their perceptions are going to be a little different. And and then but you know everything we offer is countywide. It's just is there a physical location and what is that accessibility to to that? And right. So we're trying to get the, and these are our employees uh, as as well as us around the table that interpreted that question in this way. Right. So it's, it's quite interesting. So. <coughs> so the next question is related. Um, which programs or services are missing or insufficient in the physical area previously indicated in question seven? So we start off with parks and recreation, libraries, senior centers, Accessibility is what was missing in those areas, seven people said. Um, and they referred to transportation for elderly and disabled. And one person suggested um, like t kiosks or something like uh, to pay taxes or, you know, some kind of bill or something like that. Uh, public safety, human services, and water and sewer. Next question, please rate the importance of the following social issues in the community. And I have to give a disclaimer here. We recognize all of these issues are important 
which is why we did not set this question up to rank or compare these social issues. These social issues may not be something the county is directly responsible for, but they affect several of our functions. Okay, so once I flip through, you'll be able to see, but so the aging population, mental health, and substance abuse slash opioid abuse uh, were rated very important in our, in our community. Homelessness, healthcare, and food deserts were rated uh, important. So I'll flip through over here. Some other uh, items that were brought up during the survey, uh, during comment, was affordable housing, early childhood education, and veteran care. Okay. Next question was related. Uh, please rate the following solutions for the social issues listed in question nine in the community. As you can see, um, most people really encourage collaboration with outside agencies. They, uh, that was a, a response of definitely. Um, also with community outreach slash education, um, we were speaking before this um, and we said maybe it's something that our collaboration with somebody can lead to community outreach with, with another agency. Um, a little split on assessing community, uh, communication channels. Next question is, please rate the importance of the following solutions for economic development. Uh, three Topics were business recruitment, workforce development, and business mm -hmm. retention. All three very important. Okay. So the last question was very uh, vague, open-ended, whatever you wanna tell me, you tell me. Um, and I got some additional comments from that. Um, so strategic <coughs> planning process, they say uh, more people in on this discussion, we hear you. Um, statistics related to these questions, we also hear you on that one. Um, and uh, kind of this topic of how to move forward. Um, and uh, we got <coughs> comments on focusing on improvement, uh, improvement or streamlining current services, focus on underserved areas, prepare for the future to avoid catching up, assess the CIP process, uh, and land banking, uh, make land banking a top priority for green space preservation, facility development, and business recruitment. Quick question, has there ever been a county that's been successful with that, with land banking? We all talk about it, but when the rubber meets the road, you got current projects that you can fund and some that you can, and it's really tough to go out and say, well, we're gonna go buy that parcel over there and just sit and hold it. Yeah, well, especially in the growing counties like we are, right. it's hard to keep, it's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to go and buy because we're buying so quickly and building so quickly. Um, I, I don't know any by name, but I would imagine there are probably some, some out there that, that have the opportunity to go out and buy some land, maybe. Uh, I don't know. We don't have any names yeah. yet. I just didn't know if that was something we had yeah, heard or had any data from from the NC, yeah, ACC. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a need for us for various reasons uh, because we've got the needs. Yeah, well, it would be got, great to uh, do for schools. It would be great to do for parks. Yeah, and, and our done. port, especially on the schools, well, even the parks as well on the busy on the growing side of the county. You know, if we don't land bank, there's the potential of the land not being there when we need it, right. and that's that's why we keep pushing. But as soon as we buy it, we end up putting a school on it or, or, or something. So it's 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 just 
It's tough. So now I'll go over my uh, findings or survey takeaways from, from the survey. Um, so first thing was uh, in my analysis, I went through to see if there, were, there was any relationship between your role uh, with the county. Um, I wanted to make sure that no set of people like the commissioners or department heads were not all responding in a certain way or, or significantly different from each other and that was not the case so we should feel proud that we're not divided uh, that there's no separation between levels here so there were no difference in county levels um, second finding here was that um, you know on the first question that i said tonight was uh was about the um, cip or the the capital growth mm -hmm. and uh Culture and Recreation was ranked sixth. Um, they, that topic occurred throughout the entire survey. So even though, you know, that ranking showed lower down on the priority list, I mean, it's still a need for underserved areas and, um, and we should, you know, treat it as such, so. Um, so that, that included parks, libraries, senior centers. Um, okay. Um, this whole topic of focusing on what we have. So hopefully that's what this strategic planning process is going to do. Um, we're going to, we're going to be able to evaluate what we currently have and is it working? Is it not working? Um, do we need to change it out? Um, we're going to, so we are already evaluating some current programs through, uh, salary studies, um, fee schedule study and then also we're working on uh, we're, we're helping with a transit study um, we also uh, this also kind of leads into accessibility um, this question occurred throughout of are we are we actually reaching the people we want to reach are we um, are we located where we need to be located um, are we using the right communication channels? Um, so that might be something that we're that we need to assess and look into into the future, and and probably in this strategic plan. Um, next thing, uh, this whole idea of collaboration and partnerships. I know we've talked about it before, um, but um, I think this survey really hits home that. You know, working with local entities, nonprofits, faith-based organizations and schools, even, I mean, doing something so small as the satellite workspaces, um, just using our, what we have here in the county, using our resources to the best of their ability. And then this last, um, well, sorry, let me run back one more. Um, so collaboration and partnerships, uh, it was brought up that, um, it would improve efficiency and increase communication. Um, it was rated important on the question for uh, the solution for social issues. So um, it, it could be a really good resource for, you know, helping the, um, the homeless or um, individuals with, with uh, um, mental health issues or, or in the opioid crisis, sorry. Um, last thing, uh, training, um, working on a comprehensive um, training, technology, diversity, and inclusion. We have those. Uh, obviously, there's always room for improvement, but we have those and we are working on those. Um, and last point is uh, this recruitment. Um, recruitment was uh, brought up throughout all comments. Um, salary and benefit assessments and um, like I said before the bilingual employees so so I'm if anybody has does anybody have any questions before I go into my closing for the survey <laughs> only question I have is are we sure. getting a copy of this yes yes we don't have it already do we? no you do okay. not yeah. just making sure I had yeah it. thank you the survey was due on Friday that was my weekend project <laughs> So although we've taken the steps 
forward in many of these areas, such as hiring recruitment specialists, offering bilingual incentives, and sharing services with central permitting and tax collections, we still have some room for improvement. Hopefully, the strategic plan will shed some light on these programs and allow for further improvement. I think one thing to take away is board management department heads, we're all somewhat <laughs> like thinking right now. We're all moving in the direction. As we go through this process, we'll make sure we'll test that when we go to the public to see if they agree that, that we're thinking right uh, and, and what else is out there to, to do. Uh, and it's, 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 I'm looking forward to the process. I think it's going to be good. So hopefully um, we will be talking more about it at your retreat, but we will also be talking prior to your retreat some more uh, to get some more feedback and then to come up with a plan to go out and how you would prefer us to reach out to the public as well. And then we will be recruiting you to do that same thing when you go out and speak or you're attending your, whether it's your municipal meetings or your committee meetings to also pull in and we'll give you some tools to use while you're there. So. I'll just uh, run over the timeline for you real quick. I don't think I've done that since the beginning. So um, it's on the strategic planning sheet that was in your agenda packet. Um, so right now, January, discuss future needs, missing needs, um, you know, like through the survey, um, with the help of the survey. Um, in February, we'll do the board retreat, hopefully do our SWOT analysis, review the first and second survey result themes. Um, March through August, we'll do plan development, and that will include uh, uh, we that will include forming representative groups and focus groups. We've already had a couple of people re uh, reach out to us from the community wanting to be involved. Um, we'll continue with analysis of the surveys, discussions, SWOT analysis, um, and present follow up at all work sessions to provide focus group perspectives. September, we'll do a review of the plan. And in October, hopefully, we will have a final plan ready for impl implementation uh, in the planning of fiscal year 2020. So that budget year will start then. And the last thing I have, I just attached a couple of examples for you guys to, if you wanted to run through. Um, actually, so I have the new Hanover example. Um, it was just kind of an overview of their goals. And then the Fayetteville and Durham, um, they're very basic. Uh, it's, it's something easy that we can do, something that we can implement with our citizens and, and throughout our organization. I think um, it'll, it will be, it'll be a good uh, idea for you um, to to follow along with what our process will be. It's, it's kind of hard to say like, oh, we're doing a strategic planning process and then you not know what we're gonna do. So if you wanna read through that. And also uh, Fayetteville was actually just named um, the most innovative city in the nation. So, and I didn't know that when I sent it to you guys, but um, uh, the woman who did their strategic plan did a podcast that I can send to you um, from GovLove, and um, you can listen to it. it it's very uh, insightful. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> questions for uh, Lauren? Uh, this is not really a question, just a general comment. That mm -hmm. is, whenever we get to the point where we involve the public mm -hmm. in this, uh, and it might be a little bit ahead right now asking this because that's not really in the timeline that I could see where we have public involvement. But whenever it comes time to do that, how are we going to, what's going to be our method of reaching out to the stakeholders? All citizens obviously are stakeholders, mm -hmm. but you got some that are bigger stakeholders. And how do we reach out to those? What's going to be our method of reaching out to those people to get more people involved <laughs> to help us with our strategic plan, which is going to benefit them as well? Mm -hmm. get everybody on the same page you know yeah well we are hoping hoping to reach out to representatives of different um, groups we've had um, that the uh, <coughs> a representative from healthcare, 
Um, obviously, we do not want to hone in on these special interest groups, but we do want opinions of big, the bigger picture of bigger representative groups. Um, so probably the outside agencies that we already work with, um, that we're familiar with, and um, we would encourage other people to reach out and and be involved as well. Mike, do you, yeah, do you have a, any? We're gonna, we'll, we'll have some just general public sessions come in, have certain topics to talk about or whatever. We'll also be reaching out, uh, as Lauren said, we've already been approached by the, the healthcare industry uh, on their own, came to us. They said they saw it on TV, heard your conversation, said we want to be a part of it. Uh, so, uh, well, same thing with public health. We'll start, uh, we've got our advisory boards, we'll start talking with them as well. And then we'll start, uh, not sure if we get to the point where we talking to you guys, do we want to do a phone survey of just a general population? Uh, or if you think those are effective, some think they're effective, some don't think they're effective. So we'll, we'll, we'll be bringing you some more ideas in the next few weeks. What about the municipalities? Yes, they... definitely, yes. In fact, uh, the next summit we plan on, what I'm talking about. Make sure I'm following the timeline. So we're currently in fiscal 19, and July 1st will be fiscal 20. Mm -hmm. right. October, we're going to use this for July 1st of 2021. Right? Am I following Correct. that? Yes. So the budget process starts in October, mm -hmm. and this will start at the run concurrently I mean that's the whole goal of getting it done mm -hmm. in October so that we can okay. start planning using this okay yeah. it, this this I always get it but every now and then I get it mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking in circles so yeah so it, it, the, 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 it's about a year and a half yeah. in there so yeah. okay any other questions or comments for Lauren Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be talking a lot more. <clears throat> okay, we move now to item 6.1, which is approval of our regular meeting agenda. You all have a copy of that before you. Uh, does anyone see any changes or adjustments that need to be made? Okay, we have a motion to approve and which would include scheduling the public hearing that will be required as well. Do I hear a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there additional discussion? All in favor, please say aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. We do have need of a closed session to, tonight. So at this time I would entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss pending litigation and economic development per North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3 and 4. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go into closed session. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. All opposed, no. We are now in closed session. Thank you.